Hey everyone, let's do some guided practice together. So, for our first problem here, make sure you've got a piece of paper and a pencil or a pen and you're working along with me here. For our first question here, we've got 31, that's going to be our dividend. This is our big group that we're going to break into equal size pieces. We're going to break it into eight equal pieces or equal pieces of eight whichever way you want to think of that. What we're going to get then at the end of our problem will be our quotient, which is the answer, but it also will then be the opposite of what we were trying to figure out. So if this is the number of pieces per group, this is going to be the number of groups up top. So we can think of this as 31 divided into groups of eight. So uh, eight cannot go into three zero times, so we could put a zero up there to hold our place. We don't really need to, but if that helps you out to remember that there's nothing there, you can do that. Eight into 31. Well, uh, let's see. I gotta just know my facts. Now I can do repeated addition and check this out, but I need to know my multiplication facts. Actually, I happen to know that the factors four and eight, if I multiply those together, I get 32, which is gonna be just a little bit big here. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna do eight times Three. Since four is going to be one number too big, I can't take 32 things out of a group of 31. Let's try three groups of eight and see what happens. Eight times three is 24. Put this underneath here and I'm going to subtract and check and see what we've got. I'm going to have to borrow. Make that an 11. So 11 minus four will give me seven and two minus two is nothing. So I've got three, and I'm gonna have a remainder of seven. What this means, of course, is that when I took my 31 things and put them into groups of eight, I had three full groups. I also had seven left over towards a fourth group, but I'm missing that last one to make a full group of eight. So I have three full groups with a remainder of seven left over. Let's try the next one. Again, we're all only dealing with one digit out here in our divisor until next week. We'll get into the big stuff, but this week we're just dealing with one digit out here, so we just need to think about how many times we can take this digit and pull groups of nine, in this case, out of each number. So if I look over, I can't take any groups of nine out of the number four. Four is too small. So I'm gonna look over at my next digit. Can I take groups of nine out of 42? I can. I happen to know that nine times five is 45. That's going to be a little bit too big. So I'm gonna use my next lowest number. So I'm gonna say nine times four. Nine times four will give me 36. Subtract these out. Again, I'm gonna to have to borrow. So 12 minus six is six. Three minus three, of course, is zero. And I'm gonna drop down this lovely three. I'm dealing with the number 63, nine into 63. Hmm. Well, that's the one you should know. Actually, nine times seven gives you exactly 63. Let's subtract that out and we get a remainder of zero. If you wanna check these guys, you can. You can take your 47 and multiply by nine and that should give you 420. Last but not least, we've got this big guy down here at the bottom. Now again, we're still dealing with just one single digit out front, so we don't have to do any guess and checking here. We should know these facts. Can five go into seven? Yeah, sure can. Only one time though, because two times five would be 10 and it'd be too large. Let's take that guy there, subtract. All right, now I'd like you to pause the video here I would like you to try the rest of this guy out. Go ahead and give it a shot, and then uh, push play when you are done and check and see how you did. I'll give you just a moment. All right, now that we're back, I've got uh, five times one, again was five. We subtract that out and we got a two left over. We're gonna drop this five down. We're gonna run that process through for this digit now five into, sorry, 25. That's not a two, that's a five. 25, five into 25 goes five. 
five times. Again, that's something you just gotta know. If you count by fives, five, 10, 15, 20, 25 is five. So we're gonna multiply that through, get zero. Awesome. Drop our four down. Now, five cannot go into four equally any times because four is too small. So we have to drop a zero there to hold our place, but that four is gonna drop down when we do our subtraction. We're gonna keep it there. Now five can go into 45, and I happen to know for my five facts, or counting by fives, that five times nine will give me 45. And again, I will have a remainder of zero. I've got, this goes in equally, 1,509 times. All right, that's it for your guided practice. Next thing to do will be to hop down uh, on Canvas to the next bit there, you are going to have an independent practice quiz. Remember, do work your uh, work your problems out on paper, just like I've done here. Make sure you number them and then take a picture of that and turn that in when you are done working on your things. Also remember, you need to have the IXL diagnostic done today. Um, so if you can get that finished also and take a little screenshot of that and upload it to Canvas as well, we should be good to go for the week. Week one is done. All right. Hope you guys have a great weekend and we will see you next week. Bye.